done because uh, basically the Canadian government has established certain requirements that are so rigid, there's no flexibility. What do you think is going to happen? A carrier, being the post office, being a courier, being a truck driver, whatever, is not going to be able to segregate out just the small percentage that could be going on out of all. And it's all mixed together. I think, though, with the LVS and the courier, this is a whole different complication because there is so many issues that have not been answered on how this is to look and feel. We don't have a good strategic footprint about how we need to re-engineer this program. It's the same kind of thing that we've had in place 30 years. Um, And we have a lot of competitive issues, like only certain people are allowed to play in the courier space and get certain benefits. Then we get into this whole complication about is if, if it's a person at home making a shipment versus if it's a company bringing in a bunch of stuff, we call it casual versus business. Those processes are completely different and confusing um, and have different requirements. So Al, I know this is one of your sweet spots. So I don't know if you want to color that in a little bit. What is going to and is happening is that uh, you wind up with two brokers involved in that case, one being the courier and and one being the, the regular broker. And, that creates issues when it comes to reconciliation and account settlement at month end. And I imagine we'll talk about that in more detail later. But for things that are coming up in the e-commerce space, what customs brokers or couriers have done is they've stepped forward and they've stepped forward because they have to, not because necessarily they want to. They've stepped forward because they have to. And they've said, hi, put that on our business number. Put that on our statement of account and and we will cover that. So people like Andy, people like Kim, people like Al, we're not acting as the importer of record. We're we're merely part of a a facilitation of trade so that that's what's happening on on an ongoing basis here in Canada. And and we're trying to work through nuances of that, as Kim alluded to in the e-commerce space. I happen to have a a friend who uh, clearly my friend has got better taste than I do. He's ordered himself a $4,000 mattress. Like, and maybe that's common for other people, but it's uncommon for me. And so his mattress right now is currently like in that stage of being stopped. Like they're concerned as to who and how that's going to be imported. So that's, that's left that type 86 or that uh, CLVS stream in Canada. And it, it it's created a pause as to, how will this type of shipment enter into Canada? Thus far, the way this is set up, it's the dumbest dad gum system I've ever heard of because it's not going to, it, it's, it's not accounting for the exceptions. And therefore, the government's one thing. You've got the, yes, they're government uh, officials being, you know, customs agents and other governmental agencies, but it's going to put the onus on them at the ports and at the border and all these other things, just dealing with the exceptions. And I guarantee you, there's going to be folks that are going to get their knickers in a knot over this and be very upset and start chewing on these folks at the border when it's not their fault, but they just have to deal with it. So they're going to become the proverbial pooper scoopers at the end of a parade. Quite frankly, hold her up in this regard and that, Kim is being the past chair of the Canadian Association of Importers and Exporters and past chair of many other organizations, as well as the organizations that want her to join and be part of the chair. She stood in front of the Canadian um, Trade Committee at the House of Commons in Canada, and and, and she shared what you just said, Andy, and she she shared that pathway. And it it opened the eyes of many associations and, and what has been unprecedented, it's unheard of. It's it quite frankly, it's unbelievable. Twenty-two associations stepped forward to the House of Commons Trade Committee and said, Hi, this isn't going to work as it's currently designed. Like hundred percent right. And and if anyone in you know in Canada, maybe Everyone in Canada has probably heard about it. Maybe uh, some folks in the U.S. Have, has heard. We have a bit of a scandal around an app called Arrive Can that was put in during COVID. And just going through, there's a lot of investigations about that. But get back to what you said, Andy. Their union uh, leaders have come out and talked about that period of time. And the officers were forced into having to help travelers fill in 
uh, data on an app that nobody could figure out that they hadn't had any input on as officers, hadn't been tested properly. Um, and just the consternation and the stress and all the havoc that rose. This is exactly a prelude to what we're going to probably see with CARM on the, on that, on that side of it. So uh, apparently we still haven't learned our lesson, but hopefully because we have a bit of a pause, um, people will be starting to look at that because that for sure is the downstream impacts, uh, for sure. This is going to be a two-way street because there's going to be export issues, and I'm sure CARM has got some things. <laughs> we haven't even got to the export side, but if the border is getting going to have some challenges on the Canadian side for Canadian imports, but it starts backing things up, uh, I guarantee you there's going to be issues here on the U.S. side of the border going, what the heck's the deal? We got a traffic jam or what? So as we're looking at that again, Canadian citizens are going to see a disruption on things. So here's where I want to go next here is with all these things, and it gets pretty complex. I get that. What do we need to do? What What's the average citizen need to do in this? Officers, the front line, th those people are the people that make a difference every day, each and every moment. And uh, uh, what wound up happening by the the more senior government officials in the whole CARM program is they reference uh, that, hi, we're, we're, we're pausing because they haven't had the appropriate time to be trained or to be brought up to speed. And it just so happened it was the same time as a, a union thing was in, in place in Canada. And, and the government uh, uh, customs officers have said, yeah, we haven't been trained. We haven't, we haven't had the opportunity to, to be able to make this project work on behalf of what the what our government needs and our government and as as Kim and the associations that she has led and belongs and channels, we, we know there needs to be an ACE like solution here in Canada. Like highlight things, we're really concerned about some of the mandated things. Like there's got to be options. We've always said, why can't we have options? Why does an importer have to use the portal? You know, people can file entries and do work on behalf of clients in the U.S. Um, uh, without having a client being on the ACE system. So um, these are the things that we are keeping. Why do these things have to be mandatory? Why does everyone need to have a bond? Like even people that are importing a few times a year are forced into having to provide financial security. We look to other countries around the world. We have a VAT tax here. Um, they're, they're now insisting that we include that in the financial security calculations that importers will have to pay for. In, in other countries of the world, they don't do that. If you're a registered importer and have been for three years, you don't have to have financial security. So these are the things we want to start pushing back on. We have been pushing back, but now I feel we have a little more. We have people now hearing it and seeing it differently. I think, though, too, the biggest thing for us, too, is the calculations. That was, I believe, one of the biggest reasons um, why we couldn't go live is now that the government is making the calculations and telling the importer how much they owe, we're still seeing grave issues around those being correct. 